Hello viewers, welcome back to Electrology, your go-to channel for everything electrical engineering. Today, we'll dive into the world of power plants and explore the brushless excitation system, an essential component in high-capacity generators. We'll cover the different components of the brushless excitation system, how it works, and finally, we'll compare it with the static excitation system to determine which one is better. If you haven't seen our previous video on the static excitation system, I highly recommend you check it out. The link will be in the description below. In a brushless excitation system, there are four main components. The 16-pole permanent magnet generator or pilot exciter, the automatic voltage regulator or AVR, the 6-pole main exciter and the diode rectifier wheel. Except for the AVR, all other components are mounted on the same shaft as the main generator. Let's break down how each of these components functions. The primary goal of an excitation system is to provide DC supply to the rotor winding. In a brushless system, this is achieved using two exciters, the pilot exciter and the main exciter. The pilot exciter acts as a permanent magnet generator. Its construction is similar to a synchronous generator, but the rotor is made of 16 poles. These 16 poles generate an AC voltage at a frequency of 400 hertz due to the 3000 rpm speed of the shaft but why is this frequency so high well when the ac voltage is fed to the avr and it is rectified to dc by a three phase fully controlled rectifier in the avr a higher input frequency ensures smoother dc output with minimal ripple content which is crucial for efficient power delivery after rectification, the DC voltage is sent to the main exciter. Now the main exciter functions in a reverse manner compared to the pilot exciter. Its stator houses the DC field winding while the rotor contains the AC armature winding producing an output frequency of 150 Hz. This generated AC voltage is then sent to the diode rectifier wheel which converts it to DC voltage to be fed into the generator's rotor winding. The AVR is key in controlling this process. When the power from the pilot exciter reaches the AVR, it's compared to a set point voltage against the main generator's output voltage. The AVR then determines how much voltage should be sent to the main exciter. The higher the field winding voltage in the main exciter, the higher the armature current. This current is rectified again in the diode rectifier wheel before it reaches the rotor winding. Now measuring the rotor current directly isn't possible due to its location inside the rotating shaft. However, we can't just ignore this crucial measurement. To solve this, we use a quadrature axis coil mounted on the yoke of the main exciter. This coil indirectly measures the rotor current by inducing a proportionate voltage from the AC current flowing in the armature, allowing us to determine the rotor current. In the brushless excitation system, rectification occurs twice. First in the AVR using thyristors and again in the diode rectifier wheel using diodes. This dual rectification process ensures a stable and reliable DC supply to the rotor. You might think the brushless excitation system is superior because it's used in high capacity generators and doesn't require external power during startup. It also eliminates the frequent maintenance needed for carbon brushes in the static system. However, the brushless system has a significant drawback, slower response time. When you change the set point voltage in a static system, the generator's output voltage changes within 40 to 45 milliseconds. In contrast, the brushless system takes longer because the AVR doesn't control the rotor current directly. It controls the field current of the main exciter, which then goes through multiple stages before reaching the rotor winding. In summary, while the brushless system offers durability and lower maintenance, the static system provides faster response times. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Electrology for more in-depth electrical engineering content. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, drop them in the comments below. See you in the next video.